Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Caitlin, I'm the Flutie Feminist, and each week I consult my Instagram followers to decide on a video topic. So, as promised, because last week I kinda went against the people and chose a topic that, not, that didn't get the most votes, I am definitely doing the topic that did get the most votes, which is all about productivity, capitalism, and self-worth. And also, I've been wanting to talk about this for a while, I provided it as an option for a topic like almost weekly for the last few videos. Um, and I have actually written a blog post about this topic, uh, I'll put the link in the description box below. But in this video, I want to go a bit further than I did with the blog post and cover a few more ideas that I didn't think of back then. Um, and this is a topic that a lot of people on social media discuss and I've learned a lot from those discussions. So I'll be bringing everything I know and think about to this video. Um, and so I first became passionate about this topic um, probably a bit over a year ago when I noticed that a lot of YouTubers that I love um, were really often chastising themselves for not working hard enough, basically. Uh, one of the YouTubers felt like on the days that they had off from work, when they were resting or relaxing, they basically felt like they were being lazy and they were wasting time and it made them feel guilty. Um, another YouTuber had just had a baby and she constantly was like mad at herself or didn't understand or know why she didn't feel like making videos. And when I was watching her, I felt so bad because I was like, you just had a child, like it's okay, you don't have to work right away. It's totally normal to not have energy, you're not sleeping, you're not thinking straight. Like, I just felt so bad that she felt so guilty about that. Um, and then there were other YouTubers over time that, you know, I, I could see that they were overworking, overproducing, um, and they kind of were part of that like hustle culture. And I basically had to honestly unsubscribe because it, it didn't make me feel good to see that mindset. And actually, uh, Tiffany Ferguson has a really great video on hustle culture, and I'll link it down below in the description box. But basically, I felt really sad for all these YouTubers, um, and to some extent, I felt like it wasn't great that they were being so hard on themselves, because then probably a lot of the younger viewers might also start to be hard on themselves too, if they don't feel like they're working hard enough, or studying hard enough, or that sort of thing. But I basically started to think like, what determines self-worth? Like why are all these wonderful people that I follow so like ashamed of themselves when they're not producing all the time? But before I continue, I want to stop and provide you with definitions of the three keywords that are in the title of this video. So I will do that now. All the links to the definitions are in the description box below. So for capitalism, it is quote, an economic system characterized by private or corporate ownership of capital goods, by investments that are determined by private decision, and by prices, production, and the distribution of goods that are determined mainly by competition in a free market." End quote. Basically, there's little to no government involvement. Um, our society is not 100% capitalist, especially in Canada <laughs> compared to the United States. We have a bunch of social welfare programs, um, more or less free healthcare, uh, and quite a bit of government regulation. But I believe that capitalism is not just an economic system, it's something that influences our culture and our set of beliefs and basically how we judge each other. Next, productivity is defined as, quote, yielding results, benefits, or profits yielding or devoted to the satisfaction of wants or the creation of utilities." End quote. Basically, when you produce something, a good or service or anything. And then lastly, self-worth is, quote, the sense of one's own value or worth as a person, self-esteem, self-respect, end quote. Now, how are these all connected? Why should we care? What am I talking about, basically? <laughs> So the gist of it is that capitalism infects how we value each other. Like I mentioned, it is not just about the economy. Capitalism only functions if people are productive. And unfortunately, 
our collective worth has been determined by our productivity levels. So in our society, we basically believe that you must contribute something to be a worthy person, to be valued. And I'm here to tell you <laughs> that this is a lie. It's also not possible by most people to achieve. But we believe for some reason that we should all be able to work nine to five, five days a week, around 50 weeks a year, based for basically all of our adult life until we retire. Um, we have to earn money, spend money, invest money, be smart about it, um, do all sorts of things with money, and money is supposed to always be on our mind. And we have to contribute to the economy and to our way of life. And if you can't or you don't want to do any of that, we can't value you. Capitalism is made for robots. That's my conclusion, basically. I mean, I have a lot more to say. Don't worry, we'll get to it. But the core idea behind all this is that capitalism is inhumane. It is unrealistic, it is ableist, it is extremely flawed, and it is soul-sucking, basically. In this system, production is the number one most important thing that we can value and think about. If you're sick, disabled, grieving, pregnant, uh, creative, <laughs> capitalism says, screw you. You're not a value to our world, basically. And the thing is, as I said, our society is not 100% a capitalist society and economy, but it's socialism specifically that provides some relief from capitalism. I don't think that our society is still good enough the way it is, like the way it runs. Um, we still have too much of a capitalist influence on our way of life. But, um, but yeah, it's, it's the socialism that, and, and unions especially, that provide like uh, a reason why we're not working like 14 hours a day basically, or seven days a week, or like have no vacation days, that sort of thing. Something that like really strikes me as incredibly problematic in terms of capitalism, um, and this is, I mean, the reason for this I'm sure is, is there's so many reasons, but like when you're at like a full-time job and you have a specific amount of sick days you can take and be paid for, that to me is wild. Like it's so wild. Like how, how on earth could you be able to, to fit into that mold of like, okay, in a calendar year, I guess I'll try and only be sick for two days. Like it, it just is so penalizing to most people. Um, and it's just nonsensical and inhumane in my opinion. So that's something that really bothers me. But again, it's because we need to make sure our employees can produce as much as possible on as many days of the year as possible, etc. That's why it's problematic. Um, and it's obvious, but like not everyone can do like rigid schedules for like a million different reasons. Some people have chronic physical illnesses. Some people have chronic mental illnesses. Some people have disabilities in general. There's so many reasons why um, this sort of nine to five capitalist ideal is, is unachievable and unattainable and unrealistic for so many people, for too many people. So capitalism in, in general is ableist. And part of judging disabled people is that we judge them because they can't all work these traditional jobs, either at all or, or just in the way we want them to. So we judge disabled people before we judge the system, um, which is, again, wild and problematic and inhumane. Um, our society is kind of telling us, because of all these reasons, disabled people are worthless, basically, because a lot of them can't produce uh, the way normatively abled people are, like it just is, is really inhumane. And it also tells people who don't want uh, traditional jobs or careers that they're worthless too. They can't contribute on a regular basis. Um, if you wanted to spend a day relaxing and doing nothing, 
Most people consider that a waste of time. You should always be doing something, even if it's just like cleaning your house, doing chores, working more and more. If you're not doing all these things, we, we, our collective belief is that it's a waste of our time. I don't think any of this is true. I think the truth is that basically you have worth because you're a living sentient being and that's it. <laughs> um, that's, that's the bottom line is that we as human beings um, and as feeling beings have inherent worth. That's it. Capitalism forces us, on the other hand though, to only value things that we can monetize and that we can um, put into a box of production and contribution. Making art for fun uh, and you have no intention of selling that art, useless. If you want to work on being a good friend and being um, aware of social issues, no one cares. If you want to spend your time volunteering, again, worthless to our society. Now, obviously, we don't actually all think that way. I know in general our society does value something like volunteering, but um, at the same time, our society is not built to value that. We're still kind of told that your time is best spent um, working and again, producing, producing, producing as much as possible. And the thing is, yes, money is important. I have a whole blog post about the concept of like money can't buy happiness and why it's problematic and flawed. So I'm not going to sit here and, you know, be one of those like hippie people that are just like, screw money, like live whatever life you want, like do whatever you want. I'm aware that money is important <laughs> and my life, you know, as it is, is very affected by money as are all, all, are all of our lives. Um, but the issue is that capitalism is incompatible with human life. Life is unpredictable, it's messy, it's uncertain, it's wild, but again, unpredictable. And capitalism is trying to make life into something uh, rigid, predictable, and narrow-minded. We try to make productivity be something that we can measure our morality against. So if you're someone that has a full-time job, working nine to five, you never get sick, you don't need days off, blah, 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 you're like an amazing person to our society. I'm not saying you're not an amazing person anyways, but it's like we have these ideals of what you should be spending your time doing and we rank each other on these ideas and these beliefs. Um, so again, if you need to take like a mental health day or something, people make fun of you for it. Um, so again, coming back to the concept of ableism, basically. And um, in this like mindset that our society has of your self-worth is determined by your productivity, we end up vilifying marginalized people, disabled people, uh, people on welfare for any reason, people, basically poor people, because <laughs> we blindly assume that they um, that it's their fault that they're poor. It's their fault that they can't work a traditional job and that sort of thing. Um, but I think we should vilify the rich, basically. Um, call me whatever you want. I don't believe that anyone should be rich. Like, rich. I'm not talking about like having money. I'm talking about millionaires and billionaires and trillionaires. That doesn't need to be a thing, right? Not when most people in the world can barely afford to be alive. That's why. If, anyways, and I think we should, again, change our vilifying mindset also to governments who are not putting their citizens first. Um, yes, in Canada, we are more socialist leaning than a country like the United States. So when you look at a country like the United States, and I mean, this is a huge topic, but the fact that healthcare is not in any way free is mind boggling. Like I can't even explain the fact that you have to pay money for your health is wild and a thousand percent a human rights violation. I could get into this for a long time. Canada, there, our healthcare, healthcare system is not a hundred percent free and that 
really bothers me very quickly. For example, going to the dentist is not free. Medication is not free. Uh, getting your eyes checked is not free. Physio is not free. An ambulance ride is not free. There's a million things that do not fall under our free healthcare initiative. Um, and that's, that's to me hugely, hugely problematic. But at the least, I know that you know seeing my GP will always be free. Just going to the hospital is free. Staying in the hospital is free. There's a lot of things that thankfully are free. Anyways, um, another concept that I kind of want to mention is the phrase like earning a living, right? Like people um, ask you how you're going to earn a living doing X, Y, Z. And I know it's not probably supposed to be taken like literally, but when you think about it, like we have to earn the right to live. Like that's basically our, our concept in our society is like you're not allowed to have a, a life if, if you're not working. I think that's what it boils down to and that is hugely problematic. And again, inhumane. I've probably said this word like 10 times already, but that's what this whole conversation is about. The fact that capitalism and our obsession with productivity is inhumane. When you're alive, you just have inherent worth. That, that's just it. Uh, another thing I want to talk about is how this whole concept ties into the classical music world. Basically, um, in terms of like musicians and how much we practice and um, how much music we're learning and concerts we're doing and all that sort of thing. Um, I think practicing and worth, self-worth are very tied in our field. Um, and I mean, I, I, I've struggled with that a lot in the sense of I've never been someone who practices like more than two hours a day ever and no one's ever like told me to practice more but I think I've always just had an issue with comparing myself to others and being like well I only practice an hour I mean I know I got stuff done and I was very productive again <laughs> but I still always feel kind of inferior and I feel like do I care as much as other people? Like if someone's practicing six hours a day, don't they care more? And it's just not true. I can make a video about that aspect more in depth, but um, it does, like I do have to remind myself very often that I know what works best for me in the music world in terms of practicing. And it, no matter how much or how little or when I practice, I know that I still care about my work um, and it, again, it doesn't make me a lesser musician in any way, but it's something I have to remind myself of. Now, um, in general, I do have these internalized feelings of inferiority in terms of just choosing to be a musician in the world and not, at the moment at least, not choosing to do like a traditional nine to five office or whatever job. Um, I think a lot of people are still uh, really judgmental of people in the creative fields, especially if they're in science fields. And uh, I think that's hugely problematic because again, it is telling someone that if you're in a field that's, you know, has more of a freelance aspect or is just a creative field and you can't have like a stable nine to five type of job, um, then it means that you're not contributing to the society as much or to the economy and therefore you are worth less as a human basically and you know no one's really told me that though <laughs> my grandmother once did ask me if i was gonna go on welfare after graduating university because she assumed there was no work out there for me as a musician so that's uh nice <laughs> but um I do have to like regularly remind myself that I'm not worth less because just because I'm in a field that's harder to earn a living from. I am my happiest and my most joyful genuinely when I am watching TV, reading books, um, listening to podcasts, playing my flute and those things like only one of them could even make me a little bit of money, basically. But like it 
brings me so much joy. And I don't think we value that enough in our society. I think someone who sees me watching TV sees it as me being lazy and wasting my time. But so much of the uh, media I consume brings me joy and informs the kind of work that I'm trying to do, either on a YouTube channel or a blog or even in my music. And I get it, like we have to participate in capitalism. It's, it's such a huge system that it's, you, to opt out, you would have to have a huge amounts of privilege in terms of uh, savings and money and all sorts of things. So, so of course we have to participate in capitalism. Um, even me, like one of the reasons I stopped writing on my blog and decided to do YouTube videos was for the chance in the future to monetize my content. And that's just, you know, easier to do on YouTube than on a blog. That's a very real decision, a uh, part of the decision that I made. Um, but I think that if we talk about all these issues um, and come together, to th we should be able to think of other models of living. And there are other models of living. There are other ways of structuring society and the economy and all these sorts of things. Um, very basically, I think we need to be more socialist in our um, government and in our economy and that sort of thing. I believe that we should have a universal basic income for everyone. These are like huge topics, so I'm not gonna like go into them too, too in depth here, but just basically, and 100% and free healthcare and education um, because like we have to be free to pursue the life that we genuinely want as human beings. We can't always be worrying about money. I'm not saying that money's not a real thing right now. I'm saying we should be, we should, we deserve to live in a society and in a world where when we wake up in the morning, we think to ourselves, okay, how do I want to spend my day genuinely? Um, and not, we, sh we as human beings, we, sh we should not be burdened with the concept of earning our living, of paying rent and being worried about rent and this and, and that. That's why I believe in a more socialist uh, way of life, basically. Um, and I don't think we should have to work as much as possible. Um, I want to get rid, I mean, I want, I think we should all work to get rid of the massive inequalities in all sorts of uh, aspects of our life especially in terms of money and income. I think it is really, really harmful to devalue rest and joy. That's like a huge thing for me. Um, I've always enjoyed, for example, watching TV or reading, and I've never particularly felt ashamed about it or felt like I was being lazy necessarily. But I know that some people would, would look at how I spend a lot of my time and view it as me being lazy. And I just think it's so harmful, um, again, to devalue rest and joy specifically. My love of TV and books and playing the flute, even, even if you take away the aspect of being a professional musician, just physically playing the flute in my apartment by myself, all of those things are not worthless. They have value because of what they bring me as a person and as a human being. Joy, safety, comfort, fulfillment, all those things, they're not worthless. And you know, your work, your school grades, your career choice, etc., those things don't define you as a person. And um, I think when you're like a freelancer or especially someone in a creative field, you are valid. Your choices are valid. Your uh, you know, your right to pursue something you genuinely are passionate about is so valid and you should be encouraged and respected for those choices. Um, there is so much more I could touch on in this topic. I might do a part two in the future because I'll probably think of like a million things that I wanted to mention that I didn't hear, but I'm going to stop there for now and thank you so much for watching this video. I uh, hope it made sense. I feel like maybe some parts didn't, but um, I've just, I have so many thoughts on this whole concept and I would love to know your thoughts 
Um, if you agree with things I said, if you don't agree, that's okay. You can let me know. Um, I'd love to engage with you on this topic. As you can probably tell, I feel very passionately about it. Um, so please uh, like and share this video. And if you would like, you can subscribe to my channel for more content. You can do so by clicking right up there. Uh, my flute performance channel is right over here. And my latest video is right up there. Thank you so much for watching this video and have a flutey feminist day. Bye.